This has to be one of the most ridiculous titles I've ever seen. Berberine being compared to Ozempic. Now, Dr. Berg is a guy who seems to have helped lots of people on losing weight. But losing weight isn't the end goal. The end goal is being a healthier person overall so you can live a long and healthy life. Keto diet short term can help you lose weight. Continuing the keto diet long term and ignoring dangerously high LDL levels can help you die. But we're not focusing on LDL today. We're focusing on this video, which apparently is titled in such a way that makes it seem like it's comparing the natural supplement berberine to the FDA approved medication Ozempic. However, he spends the majority of the video comparing it with metformin. Not sure what's going on with that, but that's not even the worst part. He doesn't mention a single study in the entire video. Doesn't compare how much weight loss you can lose with berberine with how much you can get with Ozempic or how much blood sugar reduction you can get with any of them. He doesn't do any comparison. He just talks for four and a half minutes without saying anything significant. So I'm going to do the work for him. We're going to look at Berberine's blood sugar control and weight loss amount and compare that with Ozempic's blood sugar control and weight loss amount. Let's begin. Okay, so first we'll do blood sugar control because that's where berberine is supposed to shine. That is the main reason that people even consider berberine. It's supposed to be a good natural supplement for blood sugar. But is it? In this study, Berberine reduced fasting blood glucose by 0.82 millimoles per liter, which is about 15 milligrams per deciliter. Not insignificant, but not a very large decrease. A more important indicator of diabetes and overall blood sugar control is hemoglobin A1c, which measures your blood sugar levels over the last three months. Berberine again had a small decrease of hemoglobin A1c by 0.63%. Ozempic, on the other hand, reduced hemoglobin A1c by 1.5%, almost three times more than berberine. The goal is to be under 7% for those with diabetes. So if you have an A1c of 8%, which is about the average A1c for those that have diabetes, berberine doesn't get you to that goal. Ozempic does. Just for fun here, we'll compare with metformin that can reduce A1C by about 1%, almost double that of berberine. Okay, now let's look at obesity. In this study, specifically tailored to measure weight loss involving 1,048 participants, berberine was able to reduce body weight by a whopping 2 kilograms, which is 5 pounds. 5 pounds in about 3 to 6 months. Is that even noticeable? Maybe body mass index will be better. Berberine reduced BMI by an insane 0.5 kilograms per meter squared and waist circumference by an astonishing one centimeter, which is the size of a ladybug. Let's compare it with Ozempic. The study included 2,000 people and reduced body weight by 15 kilograms, seven times more than berberine, BMI by 5.5 kilograms per meter squared, 10 times more than berberine, and waist circumference by 13.5 centimeters, 13 times more than berberine. It's literally not even close. They are incomparable. Berberine is not the natural version of Ozempic. It's not any version of Ozempic. It cannot compete. He's comparing the Michael Jordan of weight loss drugs to the guy at the YMCA who randomly hits a three-pointer every now and then. You have to be better, Dr. Berg. Unfortunately, it doesn't get better when he rambles on about side effects. He mentions berberine has less side effects than metformin. I don't know why he's spending the majority of the study putting berberine against metformin when the title clearly says Ozempic, but sure, we'll play along. He mentions that metformin has a black box warning, and it does. Metformin does have a black box warning for lactic acidosis, but it affects one in every 30,000 people. That's a 0.003% frequency rate, very rare. Also, you wanna know why berberine has less side effects than metformin? Because the studies aren't large enough. Metformin has studies involving over 30,000 people. Berberine doesn't even have anywhere close to that. The largest study you can find on berberine is around 4,000 people. So of course you won't find lactic acidosis in berberine. It occurs in one out of 30,000 people and there's only 4,000 in the largest study. This is just inexcusable, flat out wrong spreading of misinformation. He says that berberine won't do anything if you don't adjust your diet or exercise, which is kind of correct. It's a supplement. It's supposed to supplement your lifestyle. But you know what is able to work if you just sit on the couch all day, every day? FDA approved medications like metformin and Ozempic. 
And they also can give you a nice boost if you adjust your diet and exercise. It's not like they just stop working if you decide to adjust your lifestyle by cleaning up your diet and exercising. They will work even better than berberine. I'm not here to tell you what to do with your life. I'm just here to debunk misinformation and to not allow people to mislead others into thinking a proven medication like Ozempic has any alternative, let alone a natural supplement alternative. Injectable GLP-1 medications like Ozempic are in a league of their own. You should always be cautious of someone that is always pushing natural supplements or medications and bashing the other. There are good supplements that work and there are useless supplements. There are no-brainer medications that everybody should be taking for a certain disease and there are medications that are not right for everyone. Someone that is only on one side of the spectrum is not your friend, they are salesmen. This guy continuously disses statins for the keto diet and red yeast rice, which is just a natural version of one of the weakest potent statins called lovastatin. And now he's dissing Ozempic for berberine, which is just a weaker natural version of metformin. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.